Well, praise the Lord and welcome to this week's devotion. It is a brand new series called Be Strong. This has been on my heart for months now because as I as we went into 2023 and I prayed, Lord, what's the direction for this year? The word I felt in my spirit was be strong. And then it right away came to me, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. And so that's what we're going to finish the rest of this year with this series. And it really, I believe, going to help us with all that we're facing in life and to make sure that we go into 2024 ready for the greater exploits. And so let's tackle this as we're going to do each week, one verse at a time. And I know we've heard many teachings on these verses, but there's fresh manna for this season, for this hour. So what does verse 10 say? Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Hallelujah. There's so much in that. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. That's why we had to take this thing verse to verse because there's so much in each verse. So our strength comes, of course, from God. How does the Lord work his strength in us it's not natural it's not something we can work it's not self work self effort this is in the lord through him and so we got to know it comes from him now there is a way he works things in us though and that is through testing and through trials as we hear in james chapter one and we know we've all gone through I mean, life is full of tests and trials, but there are seasons where it seems to be more tests and trials. There are bigger battles. The world has been going through tests and trials over the last few years. But what, what if we've gone through it, we're still standing today, what have we gained? We've gained endurance, as it says in James 1. That's why we can count it all joy. And what does endurance lead us to? Perfection. God is perfect, and he is perfecting us into his image. And so he wants us to be strong in him so that we can advance his kingdom. So what do we first need to do to be strong in the Lord? Humble ourselves. Because again, it's not self-strength. People get a lot of pride in their strength. But this is not our strength. This is God's strength. So we must first acknowledge that we are weak. We are not strong apart from God. And only in Him are we made strong. 2 Corinthians 12, 9-11 says, Each time He said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. So how does his strength, his power work through us when we admit we are weak, when we humble ourselves? That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and trouble that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Isn't that powerful? So God has been doing all kinds of things the hard knocks of life have been bringing us to this place of utter humility. Laying it all down. Realizing that we are nothing apart from God. That we need Him. And now that we acknowledge this, it takes that humility. In that place of humility, we are drawn closer to the Lord. God re resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So as we remove pride and and instead be humble he now draws near to us the bible says that in his presence psalm 16 11, is what the fullness of joy and nehemiah 8 10 says that joy is our strength so as we're in his presence we receive that joy and that joy in him, because our trust is no longer in ourself, our trust is now in him, makes us strong. And 
Trusting in the Lord is the key part. Isaiah 40, 31 says, those who trust in the Lord will find strength. They will renew their wings like eagles. So they will run and not go weary, walk and not faint. In the testing and trials, we see how strong or how weak we are, how much we rely on God compared to how much we rely on self. Those who trust in the Lord continue to walk in strength. They don't get weary. While everyone's beginning to fall the wayside, we just keep running forward. Just like when I'm watching Israel and all his racing, his long, um, he does long, long runs, three miles. I see a lot of people start strong and don't finish. While others who haven't gained endurance continue on. Our endurance has come from the Lord. So no matter what's going on in our world, if we are trusting the Lord, he takes us through it and we go through it strong. Isaiah 11, 2 says, And the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. See, what we read in Ephesians six ten says, Be strong, the Lord, and the power of his might. Now, what is the might of the Lord? See, we are strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The strength is for ourself personally, but the might is the power of God that exudes out of us to touch those around us. It's a, it's a power way beyond ourself. It comes only from the Spirit of God that makes it clear that it's God at work, not us. The might of God, the mighty hand of God, that mighty hand, there's nothing stronger. And so when God shows up and he moves through us, he breaks down walls, he destroys chains. There's nothing that he cannot do. The might of God. So this sevenfold spirit that God's given us, as described in Isaiah 11, 2, includes the might of God. We get to walk in his own might, his mighty power. Isn't that amazing? So Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 is the end of the letter, the final charge Paul is giving the church. And it's also our charge. It's our charge prophetically right now as the body of Christ to end 2023 well and to prepare us to do greater exploits in 2024. So I hope this encouraged you. And next week we'll get into Ephesians 6 verse 11 to put on the full armor of God. God bless you.